Apollo Ballers, what's going on, it's Preacher, and we are in LFR today, we're looking at the Dis Priest, you guys have waited a long, 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 long time for this one, I know, uh, but the Dis Priest is here, it's patch 5.2, so things have changed up a little bit, little bit, little bit of a nerf almost, but more of a rework, as we looked at in the first, um, iteration of how to gear up the first part of this video we looked at the various different ways that disc priests can play so i've decided to start the video just during trash give me a little bit of time to actually discuss what we're doing um and it's more about controlling exactly how the disc priest works now atonement is something people absolutely adore and i don't really blame them for that atonement is something really really fun it allows you to sort of DPS and have a little bit of an enjoyment. You can see a nice little 28k HPS there just from doing some damage. All that kind of stuff is really nice. Uh, but you have to be a little bit more aware of how Atonement works. It's 50% of your healing, 50% of your damage. So you basically cut your direct healing in half of what you're capable of when you go Atonement. And it's always worth thinking about how Smite is. Smite is effectively just heal. Uh, that is a good way of thinking about Smite is heal, but it also does affect your penance. You can see my penance on nice low low cooldown while I'm smiting away there. And it also gives you that nice boost of 25% extra healing from Archangel. So there's some things going on. You can see it's lit up here. If I pop Archangel there, I get a nice 25% healing bonus there. So it's something to be aware of. Now I've decided to show you Feng. I decided to show you Feng because uh, remember as a Disc Priest, we're a lot focused on uh, uh, actually preventing damage absorbing damage and making that work for us on our behalf and that means that we can pre-plan a lot of things in feng and it give you a good idea of how we actually use an encounter to our advantage what we're not too bothered about in lfr as always is looking at things like our healing meters it's very easy to pad especially as a disc priest actually so if you've got a little bit of extra gear you over gear the encounter even slightly Doing things like spamming Prayer of Healing and putting a lot of Divine Aegis on people. That kind of thing can actually result in a lot of uh, padding that's not really good for you as a healer. It doesn't teach you how to play. So we're going to be doing a few things here and I'm going to pre-plan it. We know things like Epicenter exist in this fight, which does a lot of AoE damage. We know they've got Arcane Resonance towards the end. Uh, we're going to put our uh, shield on our tank and we're going to be tracking that rapture you can see my rapture here now again i'm going to be taking slight breaks while i talk about stuff we're not bothered about the healing right now uh, and as we get into this i'm just going to go a little bit of atonement i'm just going to proc myself up that nice buff because i'm waiting for epicenter so i've got my buff here i'm fine with that uh, and i'm just going to keep healing here so i can see my bad monk is my tank epicenter one is starting now so i'm going to pop that buff I'm then going to start Spirit Shelling, because I know this AoE damage is coming. I'm also going to barrier it, okay? I'm going to use an Inner Focus with Buff Prayer of Healing, just to keep people nice and happy. I'm going to top that bad boy off with a Cascade, and then we're just going to finish off with another Prayer of Healing. Get our shield back on our main tank, fire off that Prayer of Mending, and we're all good. You can see you top to the meters there. Now we're going to take it easy. We're going to fire off our Mindbender. We're actually going to look after our mana now, okay? So we've got a cooldown for every single Epicenter. Here comes Epicenter number two. And on this one in particular, I'm just going to shield our tank. I'm going to pop Power Infusion, so I've got nice cheap heals. I'm going to fire off that Cascade there, get the healing going. And now we're using Power Infusion just to look after my mana that little bit, okay? Looking after my mana. One thing I want to be aware of is that towards the end of the fight, I want to make sure I've got things like... Power word, barrier back, power infusion, all these kind of things are really useful for me. Now, I'm not going to go balls to the wall here. I'm just going to regenerate my mana nice and tidy because I know where my strengths lie. My strengths lie in preventing damage like what we're going to see here. So here comes episode number three. Again, prayer of healing with spirit shell. Huge spirit shell on the group. Fire off that cascade. Keep that prayer mending on cooldown. Keep the tank shielded. Get sure we're proccing rapture whenever we can. And getting back into the mix. And that is our strength, is preventing damage. So we know that big damage is coming. Stick out the preventative measures. And even in this gear, let me show you this gear briefly. It's all blues. Okay, we're in the blue gear. We're in the blue gear. Even wearing some DPS stuff. Uh, and we'll be up against people who are, of course, wearing quite considerably more gear. But that's not what we're after. So here comes our next one. There's the Cascade. Now, we don't have much for this one. So we're just going to go. We're going to have to bite the bullet a little bit and just throw out some nice prayers of healing. Don't worry about this druid too much. I believe he's locked out. Yeah, he's over there somewhere. Not too much of a bother. But we're looking after our mana. I don't want to go in. I don't want to go in too early. Always a risk when you're playing sort of a newbie geared character. I'm going to throw out a big prayer of healing there as well. Is just to keep people nice and topped off. I'm going to use my penance. Keep my penance going. Here comes the next one. So we've got another epicenter. Go throw out there. 
Oh, nice. Okay, now he's going to move over to the weaponry, which is fine. Now, this bit is a very relaxing phase, and this is where we start seeing the other bonuses of Spirit Shell. A lot of people very tempted. I'm going to hang out here in case we see some slackers. Uh, we never really like slackers. Get that Mindbender out there doing its thing. Throw out Cascade. And I'm generally going to be looking after our tank now. I'm just look, watching out for my mana. You can see mana gets very low very quickly. But I've got Power Infusion back. So if there is sort of an emergency uh, moment, I can easily just help out the group there with a Power Infuse spam of some heals. Keep the Power Mending going. Keep that shield on. And I'm just looking after my mana now. I know how this fight works. I'm more than happy to do that. You're going to bring the draw flame over there. Good. No problems at all. Again, a lot of prayer amending. And you might think, oh, I should be atoning now, right? I should just spam DPS. Well, I'm not ready for that yet. My, this character just is not ready for that. Uh, and as such, I'm not going to be doing that. I know where my strengths lie in preventing damage. As raw healer, not quite there. There comes Ids. Ids is out of there. She's doing all right. Now, again, we've got Spirit Shell up. We don't want to waste it. So what I'm going to do is a Spirit Shell, Greater Heal. What I've effectively done there is increase the tank HP considerably. By about 100 and odd thousand. Uh, and that has really helped him out there. It's a, a powerful tool. So if we think of things like Thrash. Uh, Thrash is always one of those spells uh, that we keep an eye on. For our tank. Okay, we keep an eye on it for our tank. This is a good time to put that mana him. Let's drop out on mana him and make sure our mana is nice and tidy. We're looking to go into the next phase, which is when we're going to do some serious healing, keeping that penance on our tank. Um, it's more about looking and preparing for things. So, Spirit Shell, greater heals. A lot of uh, healers, especially after getting used to this, is like, oh, I can put this huge bubble on all the raid. That's going to give me really good HPS. Well, yes, it is. Uh, but it's not going to be as effective as maybe something that's about to maybe hit the tank for a lot more than his health is. Okay, we start to bump into these things. And Thrash is a good example from the Shower of Fear. Wildfire Spark over there. And now you can see my cooldowns are back. I've got Barrier, I've got Power Infusion. I'm in great shape for the big damage that's coming soon, okay? I'm in great shape for that. So again, keeping that shield on. I've got another Spirit Shell. I'm going to give him a Spirit Shell Prairie Healing. Uh, great heal. I'm not bothered by my head. Still maintaining a 30k HPS, which is more than fine. People would be happy with that. And I'm coming into the last phase now with some decent mana, based on my level of regen. So what I'm looking for now... Is I'm actually getting ready. Oh, that druid's still alive. He's giving it a good go. That guy. Is the, the barrier here. So here we go. Okay, so I'm going to go with an inner focus. That's going to drop some huge shields on the raid. I'm going to drop out a penance on top of that. Uh, a cascade, I should say. That druid is trolling me hard, man. That druid is trolling me hard. Keep that prayer amending bouncing. I keep the shield on this guy. And again, a back to sort of relaxed style of play. Remember how efficient things like penance and so on and so forth are. You want to keep an eye on how efficient those are. Especially Prayer of Mending. Always nice. Here comes the next one now. So we're going to chew this one up. We're even going to stick a barrier down on these guys here. Why the hell not? We've got all these tools available to us. We want to reduce the damage. Just going to... Oh, sorry my friend. My penance was not quite there for you. Not quite ready for you. And now you can see what's happened here. I mean, something that you're often going to run into is me standing next to that, which is really, really not the best play. But what the hell? Uh, I've got the bop on me. Bop is really helpful against magical damage. I thank you greatly for that. It is all the healers have run out of mana. Not much pre planning is going on. So here's the final one. I've got a spirit shell. I'm going to throw out that cascade. There's the cascade. And I'm going to keep this prayer mending up. So I've spirit shelled a lot of people. Now what that's done is effectively just put this huge absorb all over everybody. And I just wanted to make sure. Because if I ran into the real serious mana situation. That I imagine most of the healers are actually in now. You can see the healing dramatically drops off by this point. Uh, is people actually just running out of mana in LFR by spamming their heals. Not really thinking about when I need them. So now I come into the end of the fight. And I'm fine, okay? I'm absolutely fine. And I'm happy with 31k HPS over a long-ass fight. And it's all about pre-planning. As a, as, a, as a discipline priest, I just have so many tools, man. I have so many tools. All at my disposal. Always have these tools at disposal. And I pre-plan them. I want to use them early for the epicenters. I want to have them back later. And it's not about pushing anything else. As you can see, it's just low B gear. It's really like gear that people worry about. I've got one raid by the neck. Uh, 450 shoulders and so on and some heroic gear on top of that 440 chest nothing special just reforge directly to spirit that's all i did is reforge it down to spirit now i'm going to show you the next boss as well for a more atonement style heal um next boss is pretty cool for that i'm just going to drink myself up nobody seems to be mass resing let's see if i can throw out the mass res am i in combat mm, yeah combat's gonna get you 
I want to show the next boss is uh, Garajal's quite nice uh, for showing various different styles of atonement healing. Considering it's a straight up heal fight uh, and DPS fight, especially in LFR. Let's give this guy a shield. A little bit of a cascade throwing around there. I do prefer Divine Star, but obviously for a raid setting, you're going to find a much better, greater benefit from cascade. No big deal about that whatsoever. And it's all about pre-planning. You have so many things at your disposal. Let's count the cooldowns. You've got Mind Bender, Power Infusion, Inner Focus. You've got Spirit Shell on top of that. You've got all these things that all work together. And going for Atonement is not terrible. As your gear improves, you're going to find Atonement is a little bit more worthwhile. As long as you're aware that it is cutting your healing desperately in half. Uh, and that it's working with other spells. It's not a case of just, oh, I'm DPSing now. Which a lot of people forget about. It's all about mixing in Archangel. 25% healing buff. On top of doing mass AoE heals. You're going to see some huge results from doing that. And this is a great time to plan it out. Is to think about how the fight works. Where do I come in with my Dispriest in terms of preventative damage. Instead of just going straight balls to the wall. Uh, DPSing and hoping for the best and then running out of mana towards the end. As we saw, that happens a great deal in LFR. I'm going to be a bit of a chode now just to speed up the video. Let's hope this doesn't wipe the group. I don't think it will. Uh, just give that guy a holy fire there. Come on to daddy. Yeah, everybody's having a good old time. Give myself a shield as we drag them through the pack. Oh, I got bombed for my trouble. That is what to expect. Bombed for your trouble just while doing that. But that does buy me some time to keep this fight going. It's all about pre-planning. A lot of pre-planning going on with the Disc Priest, which is cool, man. It's really, really cool to see all these utilities there. I just don't want people to fall into the trap. Is Oh, this is the DPS healing spec. It can do that. You can change the shape of how you want to play your healer very, very quickly, which is always fun. It's always fun to do that, but know your limits. Know your limits, especially if you're in earlier gear, you're just starting to get used to your Disc Priest. You're going to find yourself running out of mana very quickly if you go for an Atonement, atonement sort of build. We're going to show you that shortly. Even while doing Atonement, it's not a case of, okay, now I'm just DPSing. You have to throw in the values of Power Word Shield, the Penance, the Prayer of Mending. All these kind of abilities really come into their own. And the new power in 5.2 of Power Word Shield is not to be underestimated by any means. Power Word Shield is extremely, extremely effective method of healing just by throwing out tons of shields, especially if your mana can support it. You've got the spirit to back that bastard up because a lot of people like to go too far ahead. As you could see in the previous fight, I had to take myself a little break there. I had to slow it down. I had to get ready for the final phase because far too often I see healers who just spam Prayer of Healing. Oh, let's say that a big AoE heal. If you look at a Light of Dawn, is pretty much everything this guy's done. Light of Dawn is that's it. Uh, and all kinds of things like that. And revival and spamming just rejuve, rejuve on the whole raid. And if people get worried in LFR when they're practicing their healers, is, oh, I'm terrible. And then you actually look at the guy and he's just he's just putting rejuve. That's it. He's just, just putting rejuve on there. He's got life blooms on the tank and some rejuves. Not that that's a bad thing. Not that that's a bad thing. I want to reiterate that. It's geared healers and it's geared healers who have absolutely no trouble uh, with this level of content. Really have no issue just spamming their spells. They really don't have an issue with that. And it can go almost AFK and still heal the entire raid. So you need to be aware that you're not trying to win the healing meters when you're practicing your healer. Especially if you're using LFR. That's not your aim of the game. Your aim of the game is to see how your character can come together with this boss. And really take some names and kick some ass. And a Disc Priest is a great way to practice that. It really is. It's coming to its own a little bit more now in 5.2. Instead of just sort of shield spamming and spirit shell spamming and blah, 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 blah. Now you've got all these tools and they all mingle together. And it's good and important to understand how these spells are working together. Because they really are. If we even just take a quick look here. Some people don't know really how things like Train of Thought work. Which is when you heal, you reduce the cooldown of Inner Focus. Oh, okay. Uh, when you smite, your cooldown of Penance is reduced. Ah, right. I see. And all these things work together really, really well to give you some big, effective style of play. So now we're going to look at um, Atonement style. We've already pulled the boss, which is always nice. Let's get a shield on this guy. Fire off that. I still want to keep my Rapture tracked. I'm going to go straight into a Power Infuse because I started with a little bit less mana. Get this nice and stacked up. 
get my Archangel proc. So I'm going to throw up my Mind Bender nice and early. Remember, I want that bad boy on cooldown. But what I'm also going to do is I'm going to Spirit Shell Greater Heal the main tank here. This is again the other style I was talking about. He's throwing huge absorbs out there. Why not? Why the hell not? I'm going to do the same with my Inner Focus. Remember, your crit heal is proccing Divine Ages. Get a shield on him. Throw out that Prayer and Mending. And all I'm thinking about now is, hmm, I've got other tools at my disposal. I've still got Cascade ready. Bit of a waste right now. I don't really want to cast it. If I was padding meters, sure, I could go ahead and do that. But that's not what I'm about, and you guys know that. I'm trying to show you what you guys could be doing. Prayer of Ending, shield back on the tank, and then continue to do a taunt. Now look at my mana, okay? We're at 74%. Mana's looking a little bit ropey already. I've got things like um, Pain Suppression ready to go. I'm going to throw out a Cascade there just to throw out some little bit of healing. Prayer amending on the tank. Let's reshield him. Make sure our rapture is nice and good. We swap tanks now, which is cool. Nine seconds on a spirit shell. And I've already got inner focus. So I'm going to greater heal inner focus. Going to fire off my mind bender. And now I've got that big absorb on the big new tank. So I'm going to spirit shell greater heal him as well, okay? And I'm just putting that huge absorb out there. That's all I'm doing there is just putting out this enormous absorb on top of the tank, effectively increasing his health. So as a disc priest, you have this wonderful option of, hmm, this is this guy could get hit for more than his actual HP right now. Perhaps there's something I could do about that. And as a disc priest, yes, you can. You can effectively increase his HP. This tank is taking a kicking. Uh, in fact, he's not the tank. He's um, just a rep pally, I believe, who's tanking the boss right now. Uh, so we're going to throw a, a little bit of a pain suppression on him. Nope. Pain suppression, bro. Let's get your pain suppression on. I actually just cast it on myself because I'm a pro. Okay. I want to show you some of the but we're going to have to focus up a little bit here on the, the fact that we've got this wonderful guy tanking for us. It's going to cost me all my mana in the universe. Oh, he's been warped. Good. And now it's back on the other tank. You seem to give up a little bit there. Perhaps we've got one of those righteous fury tanks. Who knows? Great time for a Hymn of Hope. Now we're back on a tank, I can Hymn of Hope quite effectively. And now I'm back, I'm going to Spirit Shell Great Heal our main tank. At the same time, I'm going to build up for a nice big Cascade using the Holy Fire there. And now I can Cascade with 25% extra healing, which is really, really nice. Just throwing out that 25% healing buff, and that's how you mix all these things together. Mixing things together is the way to go. A little bubble for you there. Let's see if we we'll proc some Rapture off your ass. Now, again, not the best Dispriest in the world. Never going to argue that. But I'm giving you the idea of how you should be playing this and practicing this. This is after a couple of days, um, a couple of hours practice. Nothing more. And it's fine. Absolutely fine. Keep an eye on the basics, okay? We want to we want to proc things. We want to keep that Archangel going. Tank's been banished. I think bad bad tank's going to be back here now. Bad monk. I should call him bad tank. He's actually been okay. He's actually been okay. I should call him bad tank. <laughs> I feel quite bad for that, but that's okay. I want to get a bubble on him. Got my mind bender back. That's all good. Now we're in the last twenty percent. But you can see definitely running into some, some mana issues there. I'm going to give you a big great heal there, buddy. That's 103k plus the divine ages, okay? Plus the divine ages. I'm going to spirit shell tank, uh, spirit shell great heal him on top of that. And give him a bubble. And he's now absorbing so much damage before he starts taking damage. You can see his health pool nice and steady. Just absorbing tons and tons of damage. Thanks to a big giant spirit shell. Followed by a big power with shield on top of that. All good. All good. We can soul about to fall off. We're getting into the, the little bits now. But you can see, 32k HPS. We're not exactly trying here. We're just trying to show you some various different things. Like atonement and stuff like that. But that's everything. Okay. Let's look at our healing done there. You see, Atonement, 2 million. Prayer of Mending, 1.4 million. Divine Aegis. Do not discount how powerful this bad boy is. Look at that. Divine Aegis, 1.4 million. Spirit Shell absorbing a million. Okay, a million healing from just that. We had a maximum hit there of 210 thousand okay 210 thousand healing uh, absorbed from pa divine ages uh, which is just ridiculous and spirit shell there it is the huge numbers an average hit of 155 thousand spirit shell single target spirit shell with greater heal really huge effectively just bringing that hp up of your tank to a massive level think about what your absorbs are doing and how they're working together you see, it wasn't the great heal we were after. We had a maximum hit of 100k. But that bad boy then went on to give us a 210k spirit shell. Which is what we're after, okay? That's how it works together. Really, really nice. A fun little class, actually. I like the changes to it. I hope you're going to enjoy it too. Take it easy, ballers, and have a great day.